Hello mga math enthusiasts! Welcome back sa ating YouTube channel kung saan ang math ay mas pinadadali at mas minamahal. At andito na naman si Teacher Maria ang inyong math body para tulungan kayo sa mga problema niyo sa math. And for today's video, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa solving real life problems involving inverse functions. Pero bago ko simulan ng video tutorial na ito, mga anak ko, siguraduhin na muna ang napindot nyo na dyan, ang like button. O, pindutin na. At syempre, kung bago ka pa lang sa aming YouTube channel, pindutin mo na rin dyan ang subscribe button. At i-hit mo na rin ang notification bell para lagi kang maging updated sa mga videos na i-upload ko. Okay na, na-like, na-subscribe at na-hit na rin ang notification bell. Kung okay na, tara na, simulan na natin. Okay, so we have this one. Read each situation carefully to solve each problem. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Paper, sorry. For activity 1.1, the ABS-CBN News Report for an exchange rate are closed on March 13, 2020 at 50 pesos and 25 centavos. So, yun yung palitan ng dollar at ng peso. Therefore, the formula that gives the Philippine peso in terms of US dollars on that day is to get the Philippine peso, you have to have 50.25 tapos kung ilan yung dollar nyo. Where D represents US dollar and P represents the Philippine peso. So, meron tayong mga questions sa baba. Complete the table by conver converting US dollar to peso. So, ito yung mga US dollar ninyo. Bakit 1 to? 10 to. Ine-edit ko kasi mga anak. Okay. And then, i-convert ninyo into peso. So, para mas mabilis, gagamit na ako ng calculator mga anak ha. Wait. Para hindi na... Matagal tong video na to. Okay? So, ang formula lang naman natin ay, ay 50.25 times kung ilang dollars meron ka. So, sa unang table, you have 10. So, 50.25 times 10. <laughs> Kinompute pa ni Teacher Maria eh. That's 502.50 pesos. So, bakit dito yung mga sulat? 502.50. Okay, now for the second one, we have 25. 25 times 50.25. So, you have 1,256.25. 1,256.25. For 50 naman, $50, magkano yun? 50 times 50.25. That's 2,512.50. 2,512.50. Okay, for 100 naman, you have 100 times 50.25. 5,025. So, you have here 5,025. Ganun lang kadali yun mga anak. Ah. Nagmumultiply lang kayo. And then, for 200, so 200 times 50.25, you will have here 10,050. So, 10,050. Kama yan, ah, 50. Now, describe how did you convert US dollar to peso. Paano ba? You multiply the uh, number of dollars dollars to 50.25 to get the equivalent peso. Okay, para makuha mo yung ka-equivalent ng peso, minumultiply mo lang yung 50.25 saka kung ilan yung dollars na meron siya. For letter C, find the inverse of the function de to determine the value of a United States dollar in terms of the Philippine peso on March 13, 2020. So, ano ba yung formula natin kanina? We have this one, di ba? P, P, wait. P is equal to 50.25D. Ngayon, ang gagawin naman natin, dollars naman yung nawawala. So, we will solve this in terms of yung dollars. So, so paano masasolve to? I-divide natin siya with 50.25, eto 50. 
0.25. So, in short, para makuha natin yung dollars, D is equal to uh, kung ano yung pesos, peso value natin, kung ilan yun, i-divide mo siya by 50.25 para malaman mo ilang dollars meron dyan. Okay? And then, interpret the and evaluate P of 500 tapos yung P of uh, inverse of P na 500 naman din yung nakalagay. Okay? So, paano gagawin natin dyan? Teka, let's solve. Okay, pag P of 500, dun tayo sa unang formula, ha? So, you will have here P. P is equal to 50.25 D. Okay, so dahil may 500 ka, so P is equal to 50.25 times 500. Okay, multiply mo yan, ilan yan? That will be 50.25 times 500. You will have 25,125. O, yan yung pesos niya. Now, doon naman sa kabila, you will have naman D is equal to 500 divided by 50.25. O, di ba inverse sila dito, minultiply dito, divide naman. So, you will have here 500 divided by 50.25. So, you will have 9.95. Round off na lang siya ha. So, we have 9.95 US dollars. Okay. For activity 1.2, the cost of producing laptops by job company is given by C of X is equal to 15X plus 6,500 where X is the number of produced laptops. So, find the inverse function. Aha. So, inverse function natin. Teka. Kailangan ko ng space. Okay. So, dahil ito ay C of X, so magiging Y is equal to 15... Uh, 1,500 pala yan. X plus 6,500. Interchange yung X and Y. So, this is X is equal to 1,500. Y plus 6,500. And then, solve for Y. So, X, lipat to doon, minus 6,500 is equal to 1,500. Y. And then, divide by 1,500 para Y na lang siya. 1,500 so, your y will be equal to x minus 6,500 over 1,500. Okay. So, you will have now c of inverse of c of x is equal to x minus 6,500 over 1,500. Tama ba? Check natin, nilipat doon, kaya naging negative, tapos, okay, tama. Now, how many laptops will will produce if the cost is 14,000? So, ilang laptop kaya yung mapoproduce natin? So, having the formula, o, lagay natin dito. Di ba ang formula natin ay C of X? C of X is equal to 1,500 X plus... 6,500. Okay, ngayon yung C of X natin. Ito yun. 14,000 is equal to 1,500X plus 6,500. O, lipat mo to dito. You will have 14,000 minus 6,500 equals to 1,500X. Okay, so, ang gagawin natin ngayon, i-minus natin. So, 14,000 minus 6,500. You will have 7,500. So, this is 7,500. Now, you have to divide it by 1,5 para si x na lang. Okay, so, you will have your x is equal to what is 7,500 divided by 1,500? Divided by 1,5. Equals 5. So, x is equal to 5. 
Ilang laptops? Lima. Five laptops. Okay, next. The formula in converting Celsius to Fahrenheit is given by this one. F is equal to 9 over 5C plus 32, where C is the temperature in degree Celsius and F is the temperature in degree Fahrenheit. Now, write the inverse of the function which converts temperature from degree Celsius to Fahrenheit. O, yung kabaliktaran daw. So, ilipat natin to. Alagay natin. F is equal to 9 over 5C plus 32. So, dahil kabaliktaran yung kukunin natin, o, ilipat mo siya dito. So, F minus 32 is equal to 9 over 5C. Okay. So, this is over 1 cross multiply. So, you will have here 5 times F minus 32 equals 9C. Dahil silang yung nahanap natin, divide by 9, divide by 9. So, you will have C is equal to 5 over 9 times F minus 32. Ito ngayon yung formula nyo for Celsius. Okay, find the equivalent temperature in degree Fahrenheit of the following. Okay, so ang formula natin ay, eto ba? F is equal to 9 over 5 Celsius plus 32. Okay, so let's have yung 30 degrees muna. O, yung 30 degrees Celsius. 9 over 5 plus 32, tama. So, 9 times, ang gagawin nyo, 9 times yung given divided by 5 plus 32. O, calculator na natin ha, para mabilis. So, we will have here, teka, taas ko, 9 times 30, kasi yun yung given nyo, equals, divided by 5, ayan, ba equals plus 32. So, you will have 86, 86 degree Fahrenheit. Sa number 2, you have 20 degree Celsius. So, ilan siya? So, 9 times 20, 9 times 20, kasi 20 degrees, tas ito on 9, di ba? And then, divided, divided by 5, so you have 36 plus 32. You have 68 degree Fahrenheit. For number 3, you have 15 degree Celsius. So, 15 times 9, we have 15 times 9, and that is 135 divided by 5 plus 32. You have 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And for number 4, you have, mga anak, kung gusto nyo yung solution, ganun ha, ilalagay nyo lang 9 times yung degree Celsius nyo, tapos divide by 5 plus 32. Ganun nyo lang. Ako, kinalculator ko na kasi matagal masyado dito pag inisa-isa inisa ko. So, 0 degree Celsius na tayo. That 0 times 9 is 0. ba? Divided by 5. 0 divided by 5 is 0. Plus 32. So, 32 degree Fahrenheit lang to. Excuse me. So, okay na tayo dyan. Now, let's go to 1.4. Juan is making a collage and he planned to form a circle by putting together various pieces of construction paper. Given the formula of the area of A is equal to pi r squared find the area, or find the inverse of the area in terms of the radius. So, yung radius ang hahanapin natin, ha? If A is equal to pi r squared, so, para mahanap yung radius, i-divide natin to by pi. Okay? So, you will have here, r squared is equal to uh, A over pi. Tapos, kunin mo square root para maging r lang siya. So, your final answer will be R is equal to the square root of A over pi. Okay. Now, use the inverse to find the radius of the circle with an area of 48. So, gagamitin pa lang yung formula na yan. So, R is equal to 48 over 3.14. Tapos, yung square root nila. O, check natin ha. 48 divided by 3.14 yan 15.28 6 so 2.29 this is square root niya and that is 3.90 so this is 3.90 centimeters tama ba check ko 
3.9. Ah, ang kasunod niya, 9. So, 3.91 dapat. Okay. This should be 3.91. Kasi yung katabi ng 0 ay 9. So, pag niround off, 3.91 centimeters. For activity 1.5, engineers have determined that the maximum force T in tons that a particular bridge can carry is related in the distance, D, in meters between its supports by the following function. T of D is equal to 1.12.5 uh, over D raised to 3. How far should the supports be if the bridge is to support 8.5 tons? So, so, ang hinahanap natin dito ay distance. So, given that, eto ngayon, yung 8.5 natin, eto siya, is equal to, excuse me, 12.5 over D and then raise to 3. Para makuha natin yung D, this is, ah, uh, no. Kailangan natin kunin muna yung cube root, ha? Hindi tayo pwede mag-multiply muna. So, cube root nito and then cube root nito. Cancel, cancel. So, you will have your cube root of 8. Cube root. Huwag kalimutan ng 3. 8.5 is equal to, this is 12.5 over D. Okay, and then, teka, may ano dito. And then, ang susunod dyan, so over 1 para makapag-cross multiply tayo. So, you will have here D times the cube root of 8.5 equals to 12.5. Okay, para maging D lang siya, you will have to divide it by the cube root of 8.5. 8.5. Okay, cancel to. So, D is equal to, so, gamit tayo ng scientific calculator para dito. Teka, eto. Kita nyo ba? O, oh, ayan. So, ano yung nakalagay doon? 12? 12 divided by, asan ang divide natin dito? Divided by the cube root of Ah, uh, 12 point, ay sorry, nakakalimutan ko. 12 lang ba yun? Ah, uh, 12.5. Sorry, sorry. So, you will have 12.5 divided by the cube root of, ano yung isa? 8.5, no? 8.5. 8.5. So, the answer is this one. 6 point, so 12.5, nakikita ba? Ayan, 12.5 divided by the cube root of 8.5 is 6.12. So, we will have here, the distance is 6.12 meters. Okay. For letter B, construct an inverse function to determine the result. So, we have here, T is equal to 12.5 over D. Okay, raise to 3. Okay, para makuha natin yung D, you have to get the cube root muna of both sides. Okay, so makakancel na to. So, you will have here the cube root of T is equal to 12.5 over D. So, over 1 to para makross multiply sila. So, you will have D cube root of T equals to 12.5. And then, divide lang siya by the cube root of T para D na lang yun nandyan. Okay, so your final answer will be D is equal to 12.5 over the cube root of T. Okay, so ito na yung inverse niya. Mga anak ko, kung naiintindihan mo ang video na ito dahil natulungan kita, please comment yan sa ating comment section ha. Mga anak, sana sa lahat ng video ni Teacher Maria ay mag-iwan kayo ng comment kasi yun yung makakatulong sa video para makita rin siya ng iba. And please, pakishare agad sa mga classmates para may guidance sila. And... Please uh, visit our Facebook page, Love Ma TV. Sige na mga anak, pa-visit na and pa-follow ni rin. And, laging tandaan, let's spread the love of Ma. Thank you and bye!